Welcome to the Stephen Shields Radio Show. Michael Dixon is back. How are you, Michael? Yeah, good, Stephen. Thanks very much. It's good to have you back on. You know, Michael, uh, we're moving in an age of streaming at the moment, and I've started putting my work on Bandcamp. You're familiar with Bandcamp, are you? Yeah, got a couple of things on Bandcamp. Now, the music distributors out there, they're ripping artists off because they're charging um, a subscription fee every year. So I'm thinking I'm going to move to CD, baby. What's your What's your thoughts on that? Um. Uh, well, I mean, you, if you, well, the stuff I've used on CD, baby, you pay a flat fee to get it on, mm. and then they distribute it to all the streaming services. So, mm. so you, you get. I mean, they probably um do. I don't know, fifty different streaming services, all in one hit. You know, for your fee of whatever it is, 40 bucks or something, 50 mm. Australian, 35 US, whatever it is, you know, it's around there. So, I mean, it, you know, that's pretty good. Yeah, because you know. last, I've been very new to this. Um, I started with TuneCore. They charged me about 75 a year just to keep the album. So I took it down. Right. I went to Ditto Music. They're about 20, 20 bucks a year for unlimited, uh, you know, uploading their subscription. Oh, but okay. um, I'm going to start yeah. looking at CD Baby, I think. Yeah, well, CD Baby, you have to pay for every project. Yeah. So whether it's a single or an album, there's a, just a flat fee. And then um, and then they, they pay you, they pay you the dis- distribution monies you know because so you got um two you got the standard on cd baby and then you got the pro where you can get extra monetization yeah i don't uh, i don't think there's much use in using standard nowadays so you you go all pro by the sound i go pro it. cost more but you know but um <clears throat> i mean I'm, I'm not making a lot of money but but it's the only way to get it out i think to to everywhere you know the standard one won't won't get it out to all the all the streaming services, you know. Yeah, because um, there's a lot of musicians I talk to. They're not not very happy with the streaming out there. Like um, Bandcamp's good because it's free, but they take like a sort of a commission off your sale. No, yeah, every sale's a commission. But at so, least then, know, yeah, not... that's right. I mean, you sell for a dollar, you'll end up with eighty cents or something. They're not charging you just to um, have your music on there, which is good. No, well, there's that about it. I mean, SoundCloud, you can put up a certain amount for free, but then you've got to mm. pay for the pro version, which I haven't done. Yeah, I've got um, I've got work on SoundCloud as well. That's how I started. But um, I truly think the royalties are just, they're ripping musicians off. Well, they're not, they're not you know. Not not a huge amounts of money, are they? You know, but um, it it all depends whether, you know, how good we are at promoting our own stuff. You know, mm. you can get enough um, people interested on Bandcamp. I I don't know that how he, <clears throat> how much easier it is to make money from there than other streamers. But on the thing about CD Baby or so, I mean Ditto. I haven't tried Ditto, but. For a price of what did you say, twenty bucks a year or something? That doesn't sound like much to put up all your music. But the problem uh, is, uh, if you don't renew your subscription, they take it all down. Oh, I see. All right. Well, once one CD baby you got it, that it's there and it's distributed. You can get run into occasionally. I've run into trouble where the streaming services haven't um, um, haven't haven't got the the, uh, the labeling quite right. With the number with the people involved, so they they've got um, people credited that shouldn't be credited, and people that should be credited aren't credited, or it's too complicated for for their you know way to handle things. So um, I've had a couple of um, investigations by APRA AMCOS to try and sort it out. Shit, I mean it's not a that's not a huge thing. We're talking about you know. 10, 20 streams of something, you know, or a hundred at the most. But um, I just, I just wanted it clear so that I knew 
they, that things were coming up in in my artist profiles, you know, mm. and various streaming services. And when I saw that they weren't, um, I just you know followed it up with APRA, and they look into it. So it's not a big deal, but it's just you know it can be complicated mm. uh, for things that aren't um, straightforward. You know, so if, if once you've got the label sorted out um and everything goes through that label and then you put you know credit other people as, as subsidiaries rather than the main artists then it's much easier for all the streamers to get the information correct if i because i'm thinking about re-uploading uh some of my tracks to cd baby if i went with a standard release do you still get the royalties out of it or what's the difference with get something i'd have to look it up again but um I look at it very carefully because uh, I don't know that they go to all. I mean, you get royalties, yes, yeah, but I, I don't. I, I mean, because most of their stuff. When I first started with CD Baby, they'd actually sell the product. So you they could... don't sell the product. They don't sell the product anymore. Because you got an option, you can get a barcode on your release too. Yeah. With them, have you done the barcode or is that? Yeah, I always do that. Yeah. What? Is the barcode for? No, hang on. I get the. I just get them to get the eyes to the um, international numbers. You know. Oh, yeah. But um, yeah. Look, uh, you just have another look um, at, at all that to see see how it's working. I I mean, recently I've always done the pro, mm -hmm. um, just to get get it to all the streamers. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some streamers it goes to, and, and occasionally I'll look up to see whether, you know, it's on um, the, the ones that I'm not so familiar with and just do a search and see that it's there, but it's not really, it's hard to access the um, artist data unless you, you know, on the platform itself. But, um, so I just sort of, you know, read read the, um, what, what CD Baby tells me about who's paying, you know, Mm. Every, you know, because they you, you get a, a full rundown um, whenever you need it. Really, you can you can see it as it's almost as it's happening. Who's, yeah, who's I'll, paying for what? I'll, but, um, I'll give it a go. Yeah, I'll give it a try. Because um, yeah, it's it becomes like it's becoming like a business now. All these distributors just want to make money. Well, they've got to make money too. But I mean, but that's the end. It's hard to get anything done without the distribution, you know. Mm. Um, unless you've got a big following, how do you sell your CDs, you know? Mm. Um, so I haven't, I haven't made a physical product for ages. Have um, you made um, good money off royalties yourself, or what's been your story? No. Nah. No, nah, fair nah, enough. Look, I've, I've paid for a couple of campaigns, and I think that that can be a good thing. But you know, you the, the the ratio of, of um, returns to, to the campaign is, is about about a third mm. or forty percent, you know. So if you've put out a hundred bucks, you might get forty dollars back and and streaming royalties, you know, that sort of thing. Unless you've you've got a huge following, that'd be like a bonus. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. And then that's just part of I mean you need to do some sort of promotional activity. So it it's it's, I'm still trying to figure out what exactly that is, you know. So the last campaign I did was actually on YouTube. And um, and I uploaded um, my piece as a video before I released it through CD Baby. Mm -hmm. So um, so all, all of the YouTube hits went to that one video. Where, and previous times when I've... Um, done a, a like a video version you know of a of something that's already been released then there's it ends up being two two versions on youtube one one is the one that's gone through the distributors and one is the one that i've uploaded you know but i think because i uploaded it first um mm. all the um there was there was no you know issue with well there's never really an issue but uh, they don't have to um see it as a separate entity mm. um have you put your work on the royalty free libraries and just sell it for like a one-off fee because i've started no. doing that michael well how's that going i haven't made anything yet but you know don't have to worry about distributors and all that 
Um, yeah, right. I'll send you some websites after the show. It was recommended yeah. to me from a film composer, actually. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, um, Tamani thought about that as you don't really got no control over where it goes. So. Mm. That's that too. Really, you know, if, if that doesn't worry, then that's fine. But I'm not really. Uh, did, I, I'd I'd rather know where my music's going. But mm. um, so I'm just trying to, you know, collect some of it and and um, give it a bit of life by putting videos with it. But I'm not sure that's going to do much either. But you know, try these things, and you don't want to waste good music. So you mm. do what you can. Um, the problem. The, one of the issues I've had with um, with CD Baby because I didn't think it through uh, properly was I um, I took a couple of pieces I cancelled them, mm. but well, you can't you can't then re-upload the same piece of music even with a different name if mm. it's the same audio. You know, if you re-record it, you can you can um upload it differently but you know that that's a lot of effort to re-record something but um so so it means i've uh, i've lost a few of my pieces from um distributors like that so so i just have to find out i can release them on my website or release them on youtube you know as a different thing and that's not a drama so there's there's other ways of getting the music out there but it means that it won't be part of my sort of spotify collection or whoever you know well, I, I'd, I'd advise you to go to SoundCloud if you can and you take all the free um, uploading space. Yeah, I've got, I got quite that. a few there. But, uh, yeah. Because not, um, everyone, not everyone may not have Spotify. You can just, boom, send the SoundCloud, SoundCloud link and it's another way yeah, to promote right. it. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. some distributors too, they're very picky, like... Um, my first album, Death and Life, I, I took it down from TuneCore, moved it to Ditto, but then they kept writing, rejecting it, saying there's too much silence. So some of them are picky like that. Oh. It was pretty cranky, actually. But, um, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Works fine on Bandcamp and SoundCloud, so I just had to cut the ending a bit short. There's not oh. much of a difference. The uh, album cover, they re kept rejecting it, the first album oh. cover. So I had to yeah. change that. Oh, is it because of the size of it or something? Or? They weren't happy with the – just weren't happy with it, Michael. Yeah, yeah you got, they're very picky about that. So CD Baby 2, if you don't get the um, you know, the pixel number right or the size right, then you just don't get it through. So you gotta you gotta muck around with it, make sure it's there. Have you been uh, happy with CD Baby? Yeah, no, they're good. You know, they it took took me ages to get some money, but I'd I'd said don't pay me till there's forty bucks on there. So when it was getting close to thirty, I said, oh, let's change it, and just to see if I got paid, and I did. So so you know, so that was fine. They they do what they say they'll do, and yeah. they they I mean they're recording. You know, is is good. You can see your all your transactions that have happened. You know, does even if it's just one cent, they let you know, and if, even if it's zero cents, they still let you know. Mm. <laughs> so, so you can see, you know, uh, really well what's going on. You know. Yeah, Ditto Music's like that too, as well. You well, it's very that. important for people that they, you know, they, you know, they have very very good records of what's coming in and out. You know, mm. so, but, but that's... you know, I've, it's needless to say I've spent a lot more putting my music up mm. to CD than I've received from them. But um, but who knows what what when the critical mass might occur? You know, and in ten years' time I might be making money. I don't know. You know, keep trying. Yeah. Put your stuff on Bandcamp as well. Yeah, I got it there. Yeah, I got yeah, do that. You got any? Got any followers on Bandcamp? Only eight. <laughs> I've got one <laughs> myself. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I got I got eight there. I got I got seventeen on one Spotify account and sixteen on the other. Mm. But um, unfortunately, I've got two. With um, because I, you know, well, at at one stage with um, 
for CD Baby, I'd, I'd, I released music and, and because APRA had details of, of publication through Wirrapang, oh, it yeah. had to be exactly the same name. So instead of Michael H. Dixon, it was Michael Hugh Dixon. And I didn't have a problem with that, but it meant that one one piece of mine that's doing all right on 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 Spotify because of a, a it's on a somebody else's um, you know um, spot uh, what do you call it you know one on on their um, on their system playing playlist on somebody else's playlist you know um, so it's under Michael H but everything else is under Michael Hughes but I can't integrate them you can't do that you just have to you just have to put up little notices on Spotify to to say, you know, you're just somewhere else as well. And, you know. Yeah, that's so the trouble. Hard to get the crossover. But, but so you've got these things, if you, if, you, if you sort them out when you're first getting into it and then don't vary, then, then there's no issue. Everything's smooth. Because mm. yeah. I'm thinking for the future to move all my work from Ditto to CD Baby eventually. That way I don't have to pay the yearly subscription so that's a plan that yeah, I'm going to work on. You're still going to be up for, you know, 50 bucks every single if you do the pro, you know. So mm. you've got to factor that in. To, would, to you, one, you, hey? would you advise the pro or the standard? Oh, I'm still going pro. But yep. I'd have to look up exactly, you know, I can, <clears throat> we can do that um, and, and and check how that all is, you know, what, what are the exact differences. But... Um, because I always forget, you know. Mm. Um, but I know that I haven't done, I haven't done the standard for a while because I don't think it offers enough mm -hmm. to you, you know. True. But um, you know, there's quite a difference in price. Mm. Yeah. But. Um, so where is it? So I think everything I've done, I even changed a couple from standard to pro because I think I just needed the, um, mm -hmm. I wanted them to go to all the, to be distributed fully. I really mm -hmm. don't, I don't think you can do it otherwise. Um, yeah. So, so the um, so what's the difference? Um, so I think it's it's to do with um, affiliation with um, with APRA or APRA AMCOS, and so if you've already got something published, right, mm -hmm. then you need it needs to be affiliated with that, and so because mm -hmm. some of my stuff has been, that's why I did it. But otherwise, I think you can still you still get global music distribution. You still get money from YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. So you can still do sync licensing for TV, film. Mm. So I think I think um, well, if I were you, then I'd I'd go for standard. I yep. think you'd be able to do what you need to do with that. Yep, we'll do that. You know. Um, there's something about mechanical royalty collection, which they won't do on a standard, but... What is mechanical um, royalty collection? Well, that's on the... Um, on. Well, I, I thought that was on, on the, the, the sound file. Mm. Um, uh, so if somebody's playing it on radio or something, then... Well, the radio should be submitting all that to APRA anyway, because uh, and then APRA's supposed to pay you the. And then APRA fee. will get that, so I think you should be all right. I wouldn't. I because don't think. You know, I've read. Got... Yeah. You go. I've registered all my stuff with APRA anyway. Okay. Well, then I'd check that when you when you're doing a standard um, mm. distribution with CD Baby, whether they'll accept it because you've already um uh you're already affiliated with apra here mm -hmm. so you, you might have issues with that it might end up being um 
Or maybe it's only only a problem if you're not registered. Mm. So um, maybe I don't really need to do the pro, and I have. And, and if you're affiliated with the performer, CD Publishing will become an administrator of your publishing. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe ask them some more questions. You know. Yeah, send them an email after the show. Yeah, yeah. and they, I mean they've got some. Um, you know, they're they're pretty good with support. I must say. Are they always... Australian or American? Are they? No, they're American. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um... I mean, you know, it is. It's a worldwide thing. They they send it everywhere, including including the. Um, um the the, the um, streaming services that are more european you know wow they, they've got no they'll send it to every streaming service i mean there's there's a lot that aren't aren't featured in america mm. you know? I, I don't really know <clears throat> the only the only way i know whether um, my music is um featured on any of the the, the um sort of the the non obvious streamers is because you know CD Baby tells me that I've received a cent or something you know mm. so you know um, Boom Play Boom Play who are Boom Play I don't know who Boom hmm. Play is you know? and um, hmm. you know two cents from YouTube or three cents and Amazon a cent and two you know Oh God! Just so what the other thing you want to do is um, um, get get um, get onto the um, places like Spotify for artists or Amazon for artists, you know, mm -hmm. and so you can also. But but um, I mean, CD Baby can tell you a lot of that stuff. Yeah, I'll give them an email. You know, Title. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really know Title. I know they exist, but I don't. And ten cent music entertainment, you know. But um, a lot of them out there. Have you put your your? Do you is it advice to have barcodes on your work? What what's a barcode used for? Because you can pay like five bucks extra for that on CD, baby. Uh, well, again, just ask them or go to their you know FAQs. Mm. What what's the barcode all about? Is it necessary? <clears throat> can you can you sell it easily without, or do you only need it if you're selling a physical product? Um, you know, just find all that stuff out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Just go to go to their support page. You know, mm -hmm. you better ask, find out plenty of things. Yeah, we'll do that. Type in type in barcode, see what comes up. You know. <laughs> What is a barcode and why do I need one? There you go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, if you're going to... Uh, you need a UPC if you're going to participate in the digital distribution, you know, so that's why you need one. Uh, a UPC barcode. I don't think you'll get by without one. Mm. You just got to pay for it. Yeah, I mean, if if you've if you've got a way to do your own, um, or you bought one from someone else, then then you'd have the barcode UPC. But if you don't have it, you'd need to get them to do it. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. So twenty bucks for an album, five dollars for a single. Mm. Yeah. But um, I yeah. Know. I think a lot of people, uh, I know, I've heard some good results from CD Baby. Yeah, no, look, I haven't, they've, they've always answered my questions, support's good. Um, I've had never had any problems, really. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, the only thing I'd, I'd do again, I'd be more careful about is, is cancelling um, some of my pieces because I thought I could sort of repackage them. Yeah. And I hadn't really read that properly, so I'll be more careful in the future. Because mm. what I'll be doing, um, you can use the same uh, ISRC number 
so you can get mm. your stream count back. So that's what I'll be doing. But yeah, but oh. um, CD Baby, they got like a mastering thing, online mastering as well. Yeah, lots of places have that now. It's pretty good. So it's probably probably a good idea for um, just to to get the levels. Um, you know, right for, for streaming services and you radio. It'd be, it'd be a similar sort of compression they'd be wanting, you know. Do you do your own mastering? Uh, well, I'd, if I've been to a studio to record something, then I'd, um, they'll do it to a certain level or depends on the piece. I might get it mastered in addition to... But a lot of them I haven't done that. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. If, you, if, if the mix is fine, then then you don't necessarily have to. But if you're doing like an album, I'd probably um, get get it mastered for sure because you'd want all the levels to have some sense of um, uh, you know, similarity throughout. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. just about the feel, the tone, the tone of it. Mm. Yeah. Online yeah. mastering is getting popular now. Yeah, well, it's just because it's cheap. Um and it's convenient. I oh, would even the big studios, you know, like I'd, I've had stuff done at Studio 301, quite a few pieces here, you know, and then you'd, if you wanted master, you just send it through via, you know, upload it, you know, via Dropbox or whoever you use, you know. So it's the same, it's the same, really. All you're doing is sending it to somebody you don't know. So, you know, how much do you want to spend on mastering and how much do you trust the person that's doing it? What sort of product are they, you know? If you just need something that's going to fit into the, um, what what the um, services are, are, you know, find as standard, then just use an up, you know, use one that's available, you know. Mm -hmm. Others will do it, Spotify. The streamers will offer you a service as well. Mm. There's plenty, plenty out there of that. Yeah, um, you know, have you? What's your thoughts on CDs now? You would you bother or not? No, I wouldn't. No. I'd have to know for sure that I'd, enough of my, um, my, you know, my my fans were wanting them. Mm. With CD no. Baby, you can actually um, you can all make CDs with your work too. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know, if you if you think you got enough people out there, mm -hmm. you know, like I mean, I did um, I was with Omega Ensemble and we did a, some physical CDs recently, you know, and I think they sold quite a few. I don't know how many. I haven't asked how many, but but they they've got a big a big base of followers, so they've probably done the research. To say you know how many people would would actually buy a CD and how many would want to see it on a streaming service, you know. But once you've bought this, once you've, you know, you can have both, of course, but, um, you know, whether you want the extra cost of doing the CD and the production costs of, um, you know, your booklet and so on and so forth or whatever you're going to do. You know? mm. um, and uh, what, what are you doing for work at the moment in music? No, well, I've been lucky. The operas I'm in, involved in La Traviata on the harbour, so just playing one of the horn parts. You know, it's 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 just good money. Um, it's good to be working each night. Mm -hmm. you know, it's tiring, but but it's good. But I mean, last night they cancelled because of lightning and thunderstorms, but mostly it's on and go and you know get paid well and do your job and then teachings on of course well at mm -hmm. the moment it's nice to have a couple of weeks break and get back to it um fresh do you um, uh teach online or in person no in person yeah yep. i haven't had to do much only you know in the more extreme lockdowns last year we did a bit of zoom mm. and um yeah do you prefer teaching online or in person better oh, i prefer in person yep yeah, it's much easier to communicate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, test things out. And uh, look, what else, what's what else is going on for you? Yeah, uh, well, I've released a couple of things recently, so that's nice. And mm. I had a good YouTube campaign, and I was very pleased with the 
with the recording and the sound and the and the quality so um it was, it was very nice to do that and just i've written a new piece i'll get get done at a big um international horn symposium in a few months time and a few things like that are happening so it's nice are and you looking like at... eternal university kicking in in the mm. second half of the year and so i'm involved in that are you looking at getting monetized on youtube in the future uh or you're pushing it or you're just doing it no, for I'm not fun. Pushing it. No, I'm just doing it for fun, yeah. Haven't 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 gone into that in detail. I think I need need a lot more plays for that to become, you know, a possible factor. Mm. Yeah. No, it, that's what I'm looking at doing in the future is the monetization on YouTube as well. Yeah. I think you gotta have uh, well I mean, the, the straightforward answer, I think, is you need a 1,000 subscribers. Yep. 10,000 um, hours watch time. That sort of thing, yeah. So that's that's a lot. You know, I'm up to 47 subscribers, so i got a bit of a waste to go. No, are they, as long as they're real subscribers, YouTube's happy with that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they don't want, you know. Bots and all that. Bots floating around, you know. That just ruins everything for everyone. So, um yeah, but that's just building up things gradually and, you know, finding a niche, you know, what's what's taking people, you know, what's interesting people like that oh. you do. You know, I don't want to change what I do, but I still want to find, I know that there, there are people who would enjoy what I do. It's just about, you know, have they found me or have I found them, you know. Mm. Yeah. And uh, like with uh, youtube as well michael uh getting people to comment on your videos too that's the hardest because that helps with the seo for your channel right engaging with people too it likes it when you you have a you know all the comments hey. and when you got likes that's what i'm working on too hey. trying to get people to comment but then you get the odd trolling out there no, yeah, he's in the UK. One, yeah. Yeah. But there's, um, yeah. Well, you just got to keep an eye on it, really, don't you? I mean, you got, you get, you got the option to pull something down if it comes up, and you know, it's uh, there's these SEO services uh, for YouTube like TubeBuddy, VidIQ. Have you looked into them yet, or you no, just I haven't? No. They're expensive. Are they? Yeah. You know, when you put all the keywords in. Right. What do you talk? What do you mean by expensive? Oh, they're charging, what, 50 bucks a month? Yeah, right. Okay. Well, that's a lot. And yeah, yeah, I mean, it'd be probably worth it if you, you know, if you're bringing in several hundred a month, but otherwise, you know. Yeah. And um, it's. Uh, I've been keeping up to date with the Australian Music Centre as well, with their newsletter. Oh, well, yeah. Their CEO stood down as well. Oh, okay. I've forgotten. I, I, sub I subscribe to the monthly newsletter and Arts Law newsletter once a month. Oh, yeah. Well, Just give some idea. basic advice on contracts. Have you been a member of the uh, Australian Com Screen Composers Guild? No. No. Are they, it's like a networking event. I'll be looking at that in the future. Yeah. Are you, you part of any networking events for yourself? No, not really. I, just the International Horn Society. Hmm. How and do you the, find the, them? Like, like, oh, they're, they're interesting, you know. And I, I'm getting involved with this um, microtonal university. Mm -hmm. It's happening in September and through the doing a recital for them. So there's a few little niche things that I'm involved with. Yeah. Mm. What about uh, networking? How have you uh, found networking for yourself, Michael? I haven't really been involved. You know. I just, things flow or not. Man, you're lucky. You are lucky. Yeah. I don't know, but it's not flowing that much. So Not lately. No, well, not really. I mean, you know, I mean... Most of my life's been as a performer, so um, you know the, the composition's been sort of on on the side, and you know I've had had degrees that have in, 
heavily involved in it, but um, mm. you know, they've been the main focus. But uh, but it hasn't been. It's not something I've had to make money out of. But, so I haven't really pushed it too hard. Yeah. Mm. But, mm. You know, see how things go in the, in, over time. Mm -hmm. mm. You looking at getting any uh, merchandise? No. Nah. No. Nah. <laughs> I did some did some pencils once. I still, I still got two hundred sitting in a drawer. You know. You gonna sell them? No, mate. They're not worth it. It's the wrong. It's the wrong. The wrong product, and and I mean, it's got the wrong name on it now, and the wrong website, and everything. So they're not any use as a, mm -hmm. as, a as a tool. I just you know, they're just they're they're up. They're just a pencil now. Yeah. Because Bandcamp, you can actually sell your merchandise on Bandcamp. Yeah, yeah, no, you can do that, and um, yeah, that's right. And other places, yeah, they're happy for you to do that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And uh, like he, meditation, you've been meditating lately. Yeah, I like to do that. Yeah. It's a good thing to do. Mm. Are you using an app, or what, how do you do it? Uh, I just, I've, I've done some visualizations and and other meditating for a long time, so. I tend to, I prefer to do my own thing really. Mm. Yeah. 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 Had a, I had a meditation teacher on the show, uh Jason Stevenson. Oh. Uh -huh. He's a legend. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Enjoy that. Yeah. Really interesting. Right. He's got two million subscribers on YouTube. Oh right. He's on uh, all the meditation apps. It's amazing. Yeah. You know, uh, check it oh, out yeah, when you've got time. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but uh, you know, uh, I've got I've had a few meditation teachers on the podcast from Insight Timer. Okay, so oh, they put they're, see they're putting their stuff out on the Spotify and the streaming services too. Yeah, yeah. you know, so I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see how they feel about their royalties and all that. Well, like me and you. Yeah, that's right. They're just doing what the rest of us do, you know. The royalties, you know. I mean, inside timers can add a little bit of um, uh, money to their income stream, you know. Mm. I had a teacher down here, close to where I live. I, you know, I went to his his meditation for about a year. It was good, but he's he's got all the stuff on inside timer. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got options for for getting. For, they can either get funds directly from clients, or they get it through Inside Timers distribution, which I imagine that'd be, you know, about as about as large as getting money from a music streaming service. You know, well, their teachers are live streaming on the app now, which is good. They've come a long way. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, they are professional teachers on Insight Timer. Oh, yeah. No, they're high-quality people, yeah. So yeah. I came across that app just one day, just stumbling across it, and uh, I looked at it, and it was like, you know, if you don't subscribe, they still let you use it, you see. Yeah. Yeah. Other apps, if you can't pay, they don't let you. Hmm. That's why I'm a big supporter of Insight Timer. Yeah, well, because the the actual subscription's not, you know, it's not nothing. Mm. It's, but um, it's the same, you know. Subscribe to um, Spotify or Apple Music or whatever, then it's you know, it's you know, ten, fifteen, twenty bucks a month, you know. So. You gotta, you know, you gotta, gotta pay to participate in a way, you know. But there's so many, you don't want to join them all. You just gotta mm. find find which ones are really useful, and then then get involved, you know. But um, yeah, yeah, That's it's cool. all about um, creating options for yourself. Yeah, well, um, that's it, you know. Well, I uh, think it's sort of once we've got a good option, it's good to commit a bit and. Make it work. 
I mean, the publishing business is a business at the end of the day. Well, it has to be, you know. Everybody's got to <clears throat> put the bread on the table, you know. I mean, for yeah. for years, uh, musicians have been ripped off from record labels, exploited as well. Would you? Would you yeah, ever? Well, uh, you've been in it longer than me. Would you ever sell all your rights to a record label? If they said, "Michael well, Dixon, we're going to give you a million dollar check, but we want all your music and all the rights to your music." I don't know. It's a hard one, yeah. isn't it? It's a hard one, you know. If it's, I suppose, you know, if it's music that's, you know, you've had your time with as a composer, and you say, well, if they want to use it, go ahead. I don't know. They could easily, I could see why that would happen. And you say, well, I've still got new music to write. They're not going to take that, mm. you know. Yeah, I would, I would. That, that's where I'd draw the line. I would suppose, you know, anything I that I write. Currently, I can, I can, you know, I've got the freedom to do with what I want. But, um, you know, it's tricky. I mean, people write a commission, then usually it's the the person commissioning or the group commissioning only only has the rights for one or two performances, you know, mm. and then you can go wherever you want. You can publish but, it. With it. That's why I look. I remember this uh, cold call I made to a film composer last year or start now. And he said to me, don't sell your work too cheap. Right. He had a point because, you know, the royalty free, I, I charge about 80 bucks a track. Hmm. So that, that gives them the rights to use it forever. And, you know, you can price it for as much as you want, Michael, a hmm. grand, two grand. Depends how high you are. No. I'll never yeah, forget well, I... that day. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to sort of know where you are on the market, you know. Like, uh, you get. Um, have you ever been approached by any record labels or not? No, no. No, you never went down that. Well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't. <laughs> I'm not, you know. <laughs> you gotta you gotta get onto their radar somehow first i would think you know mm. yeah but you know there's there's complications with that you know it can be a good thing or mm. uh, you know, or it could be could be you know awkward you know most people say well any money is better than none but uh, mm. so you got to make a living you know you got to be professional about it, you know. Who's 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 offering to pay, and what what are they offering in exchange, you know? Or what are you giving up in exchange, you know? Mm. So you know, it, 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 and then it comes down to how much time have you got to um to look after all the things you've got, you know, this piece of music, that piece of music. Have, have you got time to promote it? Have you got time to? Have you got money to promote it? You know. So if, if a company comes to you and says we're going to promote your stuff and you know as long as they do what they say they're going to do then it's a good thing. I think the, that's what some I people think... have had problems is that they've been you know offered more than the the record company actually delivers. You know. I think um, the Beatles uh, brought all their rights to their music. I think. So they own it all. No. I no, think I don't they know. did. I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. Well, you know, I mean, it, it'd certainly be better if you if you're a high profile group like that. It'd be better if you had control over it. Yeah. But you know, again, who, who's have they got a full time manager? How they who's looking after it? Once, once you once you, you know once you're that once you're that busy, do you have time? You know how much how much time are you going to spend and looking after your products as to writing new stuff. Mm, exactly. You know, that's the equation you want, to, you want to look at it over time. And, you know, how much do you trust the person who's looking after your stuff, you know? So, mm. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I'm not in that situation. So. But, you know, but sometimes it, you know, can be a bit, a bit time consuming, even just looking after a few things, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, look, Michael, thanks for coming on today's show. 
Yeah, no, pleasure, Stephen. Thanks very much. Always great to have you on. Tell people where they can find you on your social media or on the internet. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I got um, a website it's called The Brass Whisperer. Yep. Dot com, or and I got another one now called Heart Mind Music Michael Hugh Dixon dot com. Mm-hmm. So just that's one for all my sort of you know more spiritual stuff. That's you know connected that way. So where's the brass whisperers about my music as a horn player and you know mm-hmm. microphone music and stuff. 